Albert A. Wong, the voice of the jungle, broadcasting on the DVC to all points unknown. If you're within the sound of my voice, you're listening to Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Golden Button Detours, right? Episode 2. We have our almost always sitting out two episodes in a row guest host blake but we do have katie this time as well so katie you want to say hello and say what's up to everybody hi everybody what's up there you go so katie is you know been with us as a, a follower of the podcast for a long time i feel like right uh, yeah 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 a very long time one of our favorites one of our favorites so Blake, as you know, we're going to try to keep this to 30 minutes. We'll see how that works. We have some very interesting things to discuss. We have our what if, which we're going to have every episode, but we also kind of try to delve into some Disney stuff as well. And and this is a pretty Disney centric episode, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start with the announcement of the new port for Disney Cruise Line. Right. Yep. So this is going to be in Port Everglades, which is in that greater Fort Lauderdale area in Florida. Right. Which is about 30 miles north of Miami. Yes. So not as far north as we wish it was, right, to make it an (laughs) an official other kind of stop for people that are driving. But I still think it is a great thing. And the kind of the neat thing about this one is that when you get to this terminal, it's going to be kind of themed on that Pixar Finding Nemo, right? So there'll be yeah. murals, there'll be, you know, favorite people from the film, and it's going to be over a 100,000 square foot terminal. So I'm really excited by this. You know, I will tell you that when I was doing research and did a started doing my Google search, the first thing that popped up as the most uh, most common search term was Fort Lauderdale to Disney World. So people are already looking about how to to get from there to Orlando. Yeah. And I think what was interesting for me was, is that I had this discussion, you know, it's funny, things tend to be topical and just kind of what I'm talking about in general. And I'm glad this came up. I was talking to a friend of mine who has no kids, has a bunch of money right around my age. We were talking about cruising and, and he was not really about it. He had been on probably about six cruises wasn't really about it. And I was trying to explain the difference of a Disney cruise into other cruises just because I've been on both. And just he, had, the, he had not been on a Disney cruise. He had not been on a Disney cruise, but had been on multiple other cruises and was not a fan at all. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, he was just missing out a little bit. Now, with no kids, not really into animation, not really into Disney, you know, it's tough to kind of get someone to spend that extra amount of money that Disney cruise is when really – what you're saying is, hey, I'm going to get better entertainment. I'm going to get better food. And, you know, it's going to be, I don't know, I would say maybe um, a cruise that maybe will have less effort in dealing with people, let's say, right? Because things are just going to be well run. The people there in theory are going to be better than some of the party cruise ships. And if not, Disney takes care of it in a better way. I just, I think in general, it's just a better cruise, but there is this extra money attachment to it. Right. And I can I, I can see if he'd only done quote unquote regular cruises, especially if it's like the carnival. No, type so cruise. he had done carnival because I had actually done a carnival with him right when we got out of college. But these were also you know the, some of the higher end Norwegian ones and Royal right. Caribbean ones he had done as well. Okay. So so Katie, have you ever cruised? I have never cruised, and I probably won't just because of the sleeping accommodations. <laughs> They're tight. They are tight. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> Yeah. I cannot sleep in the same bedroom as my kids. So like when we go to Disney, we always have to get a one bedroom or more so that they have their own space and we have our own space. Yeah. And and the space on a cruise ship. Last time we went, my daughter was super young and it wasn't so bad. But now that everyone being older, it's going to be interesting. Maybe we will be, will be in one room, but we're only on a two day, two night, three day. I don't know. It's a, it's a short cruise. And we're, you know, going to Lighthouse Lighthouse Point. So I think for us, it won't be so bad. But my kids did say the same thing. Now, it's interesting because when we went to Dollywood, we had gotten a suite and that slept six and we had six. And the kids were like a disaster after that. They said there's no way they would ever do that again. And it was a big room. Like they just were not about that. So I can understand not necessarily wanting to um, do a cruise unless you, you know, were ponying up for a bunch of rooms when the kids got a little bit older for for your cruise did you get are you getting uh like balconies 
rooms or I listen, I like to because it makes me feel a little less claustrophobic. Um but I don't think we necessarily need to, but this time we we are just because again, we switched that cruise out and we didn't have a lot of options in terms of kind of, you know, rooms or things like that. So we just went with this and I never know how the kids are going to act. Right. So I have to make sure that, you know, they're not going to be claustrophobic, even if I'm not. So, you know, I did, we do have a a balcony. So what were they saying that this is, so the Disney dream is going to be sailing from this in gosh, a couple of days now. Right. Yeah. Right? November 20th, followed by the magic on May 9th. And it's going to be three, four, five night cruises, you know, mostly to the Bahamas and the Caribbean. I think this is great. I think that with the new boats that have been announced and that have already been built, I think finding a spot for some of these older boats, which are still hugely, you know, expensive to produce and still are making a lot of money. I think having these shorter cruises from this port really just adds the opportunity for more people to cruise, which I think is is a good thing. Yeah, man, but still, even a three or four day cruise, I haven't checked the numbers, but I have to imagine it's not cheap. <laughs> it's <laughs> no, no, they're, they're definitely not. But I still think that that upcharge is probably still worth it, even with the kids being a little bit older. Yeah. yeah you know, we won't do some of the parts of the ship that, um, you know, for the younger kids, but, and, and not the kids clubs either. Maybe my daughter, she was saying that, I don't know if she had an interest because remember my boys won't be in it because they'll be 18 and 20. So, you know, they won't be any of the kids clubs, but I think that, you know, you're kind of getting this sort of Broadway level play every night. That's a, that's just a big wink, right? Cause if you start adding it up say, okay, well, what are Broadway tickets, right? What are, you know, what's good food? What's this? The nice that's thing about true. when you, you know, when you get on a Disney cruise, there's not many upgrades, right? Your excursions and, and you can go to that special food place, which I forget the name of it, but the food is phenomenal at the regular, you know, dining places. We didn't spend a dime last time we went on a Disney cruise. We actually got on the cruise, won a bunch of credit at the DVC uh, meet and greet, and then used that for some extras. But other than that, like you kind of pay your price and you're in and, and everything there is is good, right? You don't have to necessarily worry about doing too much. Where some of the other cruises, you know, there's a lot of upcharges if you kind of want to get to that same level. So you, you definitely have to look at that. Yeah. I would imagine the only upcharge is alcohol, if that's your thing. Yeah. And, you know, my wife will drink wine. I don't usually drink, so don't have to worry about that. My kids are still under 21. And, and I think you can bring on a certain amount of wine. I forget what that, you know, bottle limit is. But, you know, two to three day cruise, I don't even think it's necessary, to be honest with you. And there's just a lot to do. Our favorite thing was a hypnotist on the last cruise that we did with Disney. That was just so much fun. Oh, my goodness. That was great. In in your previous cruises, have you done just a two or three day? So, yeah. So we've done both. And and my, my suggestion on Disney. So we did a seven and we did a two to three day. My suggestion is always you start with the small one, right? Just because you never know. And that seven day, we were actually in a tropical storm and it was a little rough. (laughs) The one night at dinner was a little rough. Uh, But other than that, yeah, I mean, I always say you start a little small and then go to the the bigger ones. Did you find that you could actually enjoy it on just a three day cruise? Because I feel like, like, you know, you've got one day to get settled in. And then there's so, that last day to, oh my gosh, we got to get ready to go. You're always going to have a, a day before the last day, right? Yeah. Like time doesn't stop. So yeah, I mean, is it going to be the most relaxing thing? I mean, I mean, how many days of relaxation do you need? And again, I tell you that my kids are at the point that they're not about that. We were having a discussion yesterday about booking our Dollywood trip because we're going to do this and then Dollywood this summer. That's probably about it. And I told you we're doing all sorts of crazy stuff there. We're doing knife making. We're doing hiking with a llama. We're doing zorbing. We're doing uh, the Nerf gun and we're doing a Scooby-Doo um, escape room. Okay. Just crazy stuff. And my one son says to me, he goes, well, like how many days are we staying? And I'm like, oh, well, if we want to do all that, we probably have to stay like five days. He goes, no, no, no. He goes, why don't we just stay less days and just do more things during the day? Right. So he's not about like this whole, like, well, let's do something in the morning and then relax for the rest of the day. He's very anti that. So, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I think for my wife and myself, it's probably not relaxing, but I think for the kids, it's probably perfect. It's funny. I thought they would get, they would be different as they got older, but it's the exact opposite. Like they're not about relaxing on vacation or longer vacations. They're just about doing stuff. 
It's about how we are when we actually go to Disney. We're, we're, we consider ourselves park commandos. Like we're yeah. there, rope drop and we're there till the end. So Yeah. So I think this is a great thing for Disney Cruise Line. And again, something to do with some of these older ships as they continue to, to make new ones. Um, and, you know, I think it's going to allow more people to cruise at the end of the day. So I don't know if there's anything else anyone wants to add until we get into the, the next topic. Nope. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Katie's like, I'm done. Like, I don't cruise. Yep. Like, help me out here. Okay. So I'm on the Cotino community mailing list, right? So that is that Disney community that's going to be built in the greater Palm Springs area. And they sent out a new video. Mm-hmm. And this video is great, right? There, there's a lot of information to unpack here. And I think that we didn't really know a lot about it until now. And, and listen, besides a few shots of some empty plots, a lot of this is artist rendition, which is fine. But we, you know, again, there are some notes around it saying that, hey, this is artist rendition, like things could change. So some of my high points here were the dog park that looks like an equestrian park is phenomenal. That's this, great. Yeah, yeah, this bay looks absolutely stunning with the swimming area. There is plans for a town center. I think the best part is, is that when they show you the, the map, it really kind of gives you an overall feel of what this is. Now, there is also going to be the Artisan Club, which is paid. And I think the numbers were not terrible. So it's a $20,000 buy-in and 11 k a year. And there are some food and beverage minimums. It's going to have activities, dining, health, wellness classes, and the the par... Is it par house? I don't even know what they call it. Yeah, it was, it's it called... Part. It was a, the par house. It's built, uh, designed... Uh, to look like the, the the par house from the Incredibles, yeah, movie. I, I really liked all that. I, I think the numbers are not crazy. Now, what does it say? High one million, but then you start looking at the plots of land, and you go, okay, is that for these little small houses? Which it may be. It's not for like the big homes on it. And you know, the only other thing that there's a fifty five in air fifty five plus area, and it's kind of in that long table park, which they said they were kind of. Did they say they're going to be developing that area first, I believe? Yes. that yeah. Mm-hmm. So that area for the 55 plus is going to be first. And that the rules are you have to have someone over 55, obviously. So the long table park looked interesting. Like I said, kind of this place where you can just go to eat and stuff. But, but here's the only thing I do want to mention, looking at it and looking at kind of the fact that they're going to be developing slowly is what they said. Home sites that have small increments over time. You know, we lived through that in an HOA and we moved in. And then we, that's when we made our move from New Jersey to North Carolina. We were like, oh, this place is the best. And, you know, you moved in, we got our house built, and it was at probably 30%. Well, gosh, it was fine until it got to like 80%. And then when it got to 100%, like, oh, the pool was overcrowded. This was that. We, you know, our neighbors are touching our house pretty much because it's so close. And we ended up leaving. So the only thing is, is I think the people that go first just have to make sure that they understand that, like, hey, things are going to change over time and that they need to make sure that, you know, that's okay for them. And I wasn't a huge fan of the condos going in right by the the water area. Yeah. So I'm actually looking at that at that map right now. Mm-hmm. And that's where it says future condominiums. So imagine in your brain you have the bay, Katino Bay, mm-hmm. then you have all the houses, and then right like as a divider line between them, you have all these future condominiums. Yeah. I didn't love that. Yeah. But so. but it is, I mean, I made some notes. This is a one square mile area, which is not big. Barely, well, you don't think it's big? I kind of thought it no. was. No. One square mile is not big. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so either, but go ahead. What was your point, Blake? Well, actually, I was going to say the opposite. I thought it was going to give them, it wasn't going to feel crowded by one square mile. Oh, I don't but know. But you're man. thinking about one square mile is one mile on each side. Correct. We, we know what a square mile is. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I just still think that's a little small. I do like that there was future residential. I do like this town center area as well. And some of the ideas that they were proposing, if you bought into the Artisan Club, I mean, it's almost like a vacation. It almost felt like, am I like a, a vacation? To me, it yeah. felt like a cruise because they talked about excursions and different activities you'd be able to do. So, so. the people painting, you saw them yeah. doing all sorts of stuff. Um, I did, I did like all that. I did like all that. I mean, although I think the term "town center" is a little misnomer because on the map, it's off on the edge. 
Well, oh, that's okay though. I mean, you don't want you don't want it in the middle of your your housing development either, though. We we do have a development like that here, um, where I am in North Carolina. The housing development is way larger than this, but they do have shops and stuff. And you also see that there's that commercial area as well. I don't know what that means. Though. Yeah, future co- commercial development. So, I mean, I think this is pretty cool. I just wonder, like. Is it is there is it hugely profitable? Is this the start of something new? Are we going to see this at other locations? You know, and again, what is that one million high one million by you? I look at those super small plots, like not that right because we're kind of looking at three plots plot sizes right on this yeah. map, and I'm going to make the assumption, which could be right or wrong, that the one high ones is going to be for the small ones. That's my guess, which would make sense. Otherwise, they would have said from, you know, whatever to one point high. Um, so what the other ones are going to be, I have no idea. But it's going to be like living a vacation. I yeah, say- I think it's it's really great. And, you know, we're looking at this and we're like, well, the the, the prices, but we're looking at it from our local market because california is not exactly our local market you know what i mean absolutely i was saying so one <laughs> upper one million would buy you a, a one-bedroom apartment in san francisco right is that, yeah <laughs> i'm just kidding i don't know <laughs> no so, so interestingly enough i know the answer to that and it's like more like six hundred thousand. so mm-hmm. okay <laughs> but still yeah i mean I, I like this i'm still like I still want to know what this this bay is going to be about. Like, it's it looks gorgeous in, in the renditions, right? Like, is it going to be like a filtered bay? Is it just going to be a colored bay? Like, how's this water going to work? What am I going to feel like when I'm in there? I made a note about that because they talked about it. It's going to use Crystal Lagoons technology. Yeah, we know that. But what does that mean? Like, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, what's the bottom of it feel like? Like, what, what, what uh, does, you, you know... That, that's where I'm kind of curious yeah. about. Um, I think it's going to be nice. I think it's going to be great. I would love to live there. I mean, that extra 11K a year, the buy-in I don't think is bad for the, you know, the artisan club. I mean, the buy-ins around here for golf clubs are about that. Um, so I think that's fine. The 11K a year, that's on par for somewhere if you were playing golf. Now, there is no golf here, right? But I'm just making kind of the comparison. I don't think that's terrible. And I think that... Yeah. The stuff that you're going to get that comes along with this. Now, I always look at this, well, are we going to be getting the same stuff 10 years from now? Because I look at the old development that I used to live in and everything that they used to do in the beginning, right? We had um, Santa sleigh rides. We had, you know, pumpkin cart. We had tons of stuff for the first couple of years. And then as the community grew and time kind of went on and everything went up in price, those things kind of cut down a little bit. So I'm hopeful that this is something they're going to maintain. But again, what is the future for this? Is is this something that Disney's going to want to do to be profitable going forward? Well, I would think they would. They're planning on it because during that video, they talked about how they're already looking at other areas in the in the country to replicate this. Would you move to one in North Carolina? <sighs> mm. Not for the upper one millions. <laughs> <laughs> I just. I, I mean, for me, the problem is, is that the houses look like they're on top of each other, and I've lived. Oh, I don't yeah. know if I would do that again. At, at this stage of my life, no. It, like the fifty-five plus, hmm, you know, I but, might think about that. I don't know if I can even pull that off because even at the fifty-five plus, if I'm, I'm walking outside and there's like I can touch somebody's house from my front porch, I'm just not really about that. Well, you let know? me ask. So, how different do you think this is going to be from Celebration, Florida? Well, I mean, you're talking about the development that already exists there? Right. The one that, yeah, the used to be Disney town that is now. Oh, I don't know. I thought you were talking about, it's going to be way different than Golden Oaks, obviously. No, 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 not not Golden Oaks. Yeah, you know, so I'm not familiar with Celebration, to be honest with you. Well, Celebration was this town that Disney started. I mean, it's its own incorporated town. And Disney used to run it, but they don't anymore. They... I don't know what the so, term is. They so, spun it off or whatever. Yeah. So do you think this is something where Disney comes in, puts it up, runs it for 10 years, and then hands it off? They could, because that's actually spelled out in the in the legalese, if you read the, the fine print. It says that- No, that's what we have you around here for. Yeah, I know. I'm the <laughs> details guy. They um, So they say there's no guarantee that Disney will 
will um, will run this forever. Um, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but yeah, it's like you just you buy in knowing that at any time Disney can walk away. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the way I read it is so they have builders, three builders right now. Yeah. Um, and it's all just Disney branded at this mm-hmm. point. So. I wonder if Disney's just making the money off the licensing fees. Not sure, but it, it is a super exciting thing. And I would, again, I'd, I'd love to have a, like a vacation home there. So like I could go there for like three months and then I was like, oh, these neighbors, I'm just done with them. And I just go somewhere else. Like I'd be all about that. That would be absolutely fine with me. What, what would, so this is in the desert. If you were going to build the next one, what area would you do mountains? Would you do the beach? Mm. Would you I wish there was Disney Mountain somewhere anyway. Yeah. That would be nice, really nice. Yeah. Maybe we maybe we can finally get this Disney ski resort that's <laughs> been I mean, but, talked but about the is, for the last fifty years. <laughs> it's gonna be like they would build this again probably in Colorado, where I'd want it built like in Tennessee. You, you know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how I see this. So I don't know. I just thought that was super interesting. You know, again, these videos are coming out. I am on the mailing list, so at least I can continue to watch. Um, I'm also on the Golden Oaks mailing list. That seems more appropriate in terms of like closeness to Disney and size, but you know, a little bit prohibitive price wise. This, at least, you know, again, you can the, the buy in is under two million, <laughs> which I guess is a good thing. Yeah. I don't know. I still got to have a lot of money to live there, even after that buy in. It seems like though. All right. Um, Anything else on this? Nope. All right. So now the what if, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite. Um, So this is something I've always been thinking about. So I'm a huge Rankin Bass fan, right? So we have all of the holiday specials. But, you know, we have to remember that that production company did a bunch of other things as well, right? We have The Hobbit. We have The Last Unicorn, where, where, you know, Rankin Bass directed. We have Thundercats, which was produced by Rankin Bass Productions, and Silverhawks, which I also like Thundercats probably the best, but I, Silverhawks was fine as well. All right. Now, before go we go, so for those that are not familiar, because I'm going to be honest, I had to look it up. I, and, I, and I almost <laughs> didn't let Blake come on the show because yeah. of that. I, I almost what? thought, yeah. As, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, I know these guys. So for those that aren't familiar, Rankin Bass, you know their work because they did Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So if you've been born any time in the last 50 years, you've seen them. Uh, among, among other things. Yeah. So yeah. I would say probably my favorite of all of theirs is either Jack Frost, which I thought was the absolute best, or Here Comes Peter Cottontail, which is just like such a winner and just doesn't get the same amount of love because it's Easter. But they did The Hobbit, right? Like The Last Unicorn. There's a lot of things here. So the what if question is, what if Disney bought them? Just like they bought Star Wars and Marvel. What if they bought Rankin Bass? What would you want them to do with it? And how would you envision that? Now, for me... Right. I feel like so Dollywood used to have the characters at Christmas, which was awesome. I think they went somewhere else now because last time we were going to go to Dollywood at Christmas, you know, they didn't have them. But you had Cornelius, Abominable. You had everybody, which, you know, Hermes, it was great for me. This is that next park. This is an integration, maybe because you have Frozen. So you have to use this in a way that you're integrating, you know, everything into some situation, but without messing with Frozen. I think it's a new park. I think you could also take over some of Blizzard Beach with, you know, Frosty or a oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Like that, right? So I would kind of have half frozen, half like – I would use it there. But I'm thinking a new park now. That new park, you would have something called Holiday Land, something along those lines. Because I don't want to miss out on Here Comes Peter Cottontail. I probably would, you know, let the Thundercats go. I mean, even though a Thundercats ride would be the best. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I could only imagine. But, yes, yeah, so I'm thinking you have all your character meet and greets. You have a, a sleigh coaster, right? You need a sleigh sort of coaster. You have all sorts of, you know, kid you rides have, as well. A, you could have Rudolph. a dark ride through the Abominable. Um, yeah, you so could do that. It might be a little scary, right? We're still, again, we st- st- the Great Escape was too scary even after Alien, so I don't know if a dark ride would work here. But, I mean, gosh, we can do a dark ride, even Hobbit dark ride. But anyway, um, but I, I would envision this as kind of a park, similar in size to Animal Kingdom, right, minus the animals. 
um, you know, in terms of ride wise, but, but that's kind of what I'd like to see. So what, what do you think? I mean, and gosh, the, the specials and the spinoffs, I mean, I would love to see Rudolph come back again. I, all right. So then let me ask this. I'm going to answer it by asking you a question. Would you want to see something, um, like Disney or star Wars done in that Rankin Bass type stop motion production? Like you said, no. in no, absolutely not. Like, so no, I don't want them to use that super cool rank and bass, you know, air quoting technology or right. look in something else. No, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, I agree. No. Yeah. Solid no. Yeah. Th- there's there's definitely the nostalgia factor. Now, I'm also a fan of Miser Brothers. Have you ever seen that? So that is a CGI kind of take on that rank and bass style with obviously the, the miser brothers fighting with uh north wind it's actually a pretty good holiday show if you can either find it online or you know pick up a dvd of it as well which is what i did but that's another one so yeah i mean i would love this i, I can think of it like um you know holiday all the time which I, I think is not a bad thing like i said i mean i think that would work well in florida kind of that same sort of vibe that blizzard beach has you could do all of that sort of stuff. You have your built-in characters. I, I don't know. I, I think this is a this gosh. Is a the more movie. the more I think about it, that Thundercats. That's a <laughs> get off of Thundercats. That's a gold mine. That would be awesome. That's a gold mine of material there. You could do oh. yes, but I don't know if people are really still bought into Thundercats. I think that's a huge sort of like um, you know older person sort of vibe now where I think that kids in general are still into those holiday specials. But Damon, that's where all the money is right now is the older folks like you and me. <laughs> I mean, well, who's got the money? Yeah. yeah but they they're no. still, but aren't but, they still more concerned about what their kids want? I guess, but think about it. If you went and you had like Thundercats, Thundercats land and then turn and you turn the corner and then you're like in the, the land of the misfit toys, it would just be awesome. If you could somehow blend it all together into some kind of magical world, it'd be cool. So would you want it attached to Disney or would you want it separate? I would want it separate. Could Oh, this could be Disney's answer to the regional theme park. Yeah, just a Rankin Bass Park somewhere instead. But run like Disney, which is is the benefit here. Right. Yeah. Well, the Disney name, just like the Contino, you know, it – it draws people into it. So you say rank and bass by Disney in Tennessee or wherever, Montana. I like where you're thinking. I'm, I'm always about Tennessee. Anything can go in Tennessee. I'm all about that. <laughs> so, so what are you, what's your favorite show? Let's say holiday show from them. I think oh, Santa, Santa, me. Santa's, uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. The, uh, to the me, it's socks Rudolph. on the ears. Yeah. I feel like Blake has not seen anything besides Rudolph, though. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Wait, have you, though? Maybe. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, how do you not know about Nestor? Like, that makes everyone cry. Like, we can't even really watch it in the house anymore because it's Nestor, the long eared donkey. Like, come on. You know, man. Like, it's, it, the older I get, the cloudier it gets up here. So. so, I will tell you that I went out of my way to purchase their full DVD set this year because I was missing some of the shows. So I don't know how, you know, what TV services you have, but I'm having a tough time during the holiday season finding these shows online because they only show them once. They can't DVR them anymore, which is Mm -hmm. crazy talk. So I just went for the DVD set and I forgot about Pinocchio's Christmas. I forgot it existed, right? Like there's a lot of um, shows on there that they have for the holidays that uh, you don't necessarily always get to watch all the time. But Freeform has most of them, 25 Days of Christmas. Right, so check it out. Uh, all right, so we are going to hit our number again, which is what I love. Does anyone have anything to say to finish this up? And we don't know when the next one of these is going to be holiday next week, and who knows? But any other thoughts here? Not no. for me. All right, we will wrap it up. Wait. All right, yes, as always. Welcome Home Podcast and now Golden Button Detours are for entertainment purposes only. Even though we might want to be, we are not employed by the Walt Disney Company, and as such, all opinions expressed on the show are exclusively our own, especially the bad ones. Please consult with a DVC cast member or Disney representative for more information about anything we might have talked about today. 
And with right, that... Thank you, everybody. Yep. This is Skipper Albert A. Wall, the voice of the jungle, signing off from Welcome Home Podcast on the DVC. When we hit a chair, how she can cuddle is no man's affair. I looked around from pole to pole, found her in a sugar bowl. Look out, here comes.